Well, Hornaday has either made the most ridiculous 24 caliber cartridge in history, or it's brilliant. We're about to find out on this episode of Ron Spomer Outdoors. Hey, welcome everyone. The cartridge of which we speak is this little stumper. The six millimeter ARC, Advanced Rifle Cartridge. And when this thing came out, I did a blog on my website. The Hornaday 6mm ARC joins race to the bottom. See there? <laughs> I mean, I just thought this is ridiculous. We spent half of the 20th century trying to come up with 24 calibers that would go faster and hit harder than all the rest. And here we are in the 21st century, and Hornady comes up with this little stumper, which is obviously a lot slower than the rest, because here's a line of 24s right here, guys. Why do we want to go slower? What is this race to the bottom all about? So I think today it's mea culpa time. Actually, guys, I think I'm probably going to have to start to run for politics or something because I'm a flip flopper <laughs> among the best of them because I have really changed my mind about this six millimeter ARC. I honestly think this is probably one of the best little deer cartridges you can get. And it's a superb choice for new shooters or anyone who's sensitive to recoil. And we're gonna look at some ballistic numbers that are just gonna amaze you if you haven't studied this little six millimeter yet. Crazy. But let's go back to a little history first. In the 20th century, of course, we were just really coming on strong with new cartridges because they had invented smokeless powder in the 1880s or so, and it really started to, to take shape by the 1900s. So they were able to make smaller and smaller cartridges go faster and faster, and they would match up to the energies they used to get out of those big, heavy, thumping muzzle loaders. So they got some 25s, and there was a 25 uh, Remington that didn't do much, and then they came up with this 250 Savage, and that was the first one that really started to scream. It went 3,000 feet per second with an 87 grain bullet. So now we're getting our velocities up there, and this happened about the 1915 or so. And then uh, once they realized they could go fast with little bullets on bottleneck cartridges, they came out with the 257 Roberts. And that was a real mild shooting, flat shooting, popular deer cartridge for a lot of years until the 1950s. And then Wildcatters had been fooling around with the 757 Mauser and the 308 Winchester cases and making them as narrow as 24 calibers. So the 24s came out in 1955. The first two, and you probably already know, it's the 243 Winchester and the six millimeter Remington. At that time though, it was called the 244 Remington, which is one of the best names they ever came up with for a 24 caliber cartridge or really any. I mean, to me, anytime you put a 44 in a cartridge, you're harking back to the 44 Henry flat, the 4440, the first center fire and rim fire cartridges self-contained in the middle of the uh, 19th century that really started all this cartridge craze. So you had those two pushing 24 caliber bullets and suddenly people realized they were going faster, shooting flatter, and even hitting a little bit harder than the 25s. So the 25s really started to fall off the table <laughs> because the 24s took over. They became so popular that even Weatherby had to give him a nod and try to come up with something faster. And of course he did. The 240 Weatherby Magnum, a little belt on that little guy. <laughs> and as you can see, it's a longer case. It's going to be a 30 out 6 length rather than a short action length. And what that did was add about two, 300 feet per second to these two. And that's a new champ. But of course, Weatherby, true to form, made that a proprietary cartridge, so only they were building rifles for it and selling ammunition for it. So it never became as popular as the other two. And then you know the story of the six millimeter Remington, that 244. They didn't twist it fast enough for most people's tastes. So that one really started to suffer. And the 243 came out as the ultimate winner. That's the standard against which all others are now judged. So why come up with this little stumpy six millimeter ARC? Why advanced rifle cartridge? How can that be advanced? Here's why it's advanced. A couple of quick reasons. The 243 was twisted fast enough, one in 10 inch twist, to stabilize 100 grain bullets. 
Uh, but of course, all the rage these days are much sleeker, longer, higher BC bullets. And this Sirocco right here is a 90 or 95 grain. I gotta check my box. 90 grain. This 90 grain boat tail Spire Point Sirocco with a polymer tip is a pretty high BC sleek fast bullet that is still short enough to stabilize in the 243 Winchester 1 in 10 twist. But what this six millimeter ARC does is it shoots this 108 grain bullet from Hornady, which has a BC of 0.536, pretty much the highest. There's a 115 grain bullet out there. Berger has some real sleek ones too, but you get the basic idea. We are adding length to our bullets. And we are designing our cartridges so that they can handle those long bullets without hitting the rifling. There's the shortcoming of the 243. Simply because it's older, it was designed back in the day when we didn't have these long, long bullets. You can't really effectively load such a long bullet atop a 243. Look at how far it sticks down into that powder capacity. And of course, then you're fighting that donut ring if you're a hand loader on the inside of the neck shoulder junction right there. So it's yeah, it can be done, but it's just not as convenient as having a cartridge set up from the get-go to handle these guys. Let me see if I can get that one up against. Yeah, can you see how that's fitting in there? Doesn't protrude quite as far down in. Any rate, that's the idea. So what we're going to do is look at some numbers. That's what I think is going to impress you is what this little six millimeter can do compared to the 243 or the modern version of the 243, by the way, is the six millimeter Creedmoor. Much as you hate to probably even hear anything about that. Here's the 6.5 Creedmoor and you can see how it stands up against the uh, 243. Pretty close powder reservoir sizes on these two. Neck that down to six millimeter and you've got your six millimeter Creedmoor. Almost exactly the same ballistic performance as the 243, except for you can more easily shoot those long high BC bullets and that's going to give you better performance far down range. Up to 300 yards or so, they're neck and neck. Then that heavier bullet starts to take over because it's got the higher BC. So now we're going to step down and pretend this is a six. I don't know why I didn't grab the six millimeter right away. We're going to step down to this shorty. Why go so much shorter? You probably know the answer. AR-15 style rifles. <laughs> that drives so much of this stuff. So the idea here is how are we going to get increased performance out of the limited length we have to shoot in the magazines and the actions of an AR-15? And of course, that's a 2.26 inch length of the 223 Remington or the 5.56 NATO. You can't go any longer than that and work. So what can we do to improve our ballistic performance? One of you came up with this ARC. And the way they do it is by using the fast burning powders that work best with the bullets they're shooting, all the usual stuff, and then put those high BC bullets in there so they have better downrange performance. It's not so much that they're concerned anymore about maximizing velocity the way we did in the 20th century. Now it's all about maximizing ballistics efficiency and it makes a big difference. So let's look at some numbers. First of all, we're gonna look at some of the SAMI specs on this little cartridge to fully understand it. SAMI gave it a specification for the maximum average chamber pressure of 52,000 PSI, 52,000. But in Hornady's reloading manual for this cartridge, it lists separate data if you're shooting it in a strong bolt action rifle. There they give it 62,000 because it's not a gas gun, you can get your pressures up and that makes a big difference in your velocities. Also in most gas guns, AR-15 styles, you're probably looking at 16 to at most 20 inch barrels and I'm guessing 18 is about right, 18 and a half. So if you do that, look on the chart we'll put up here for you. On the gas gun shooting this 108 grain bullet, this is the EDL match bullet, you're going to drive it somewhere between 2,500 and 2,550 feet per second. I'm guessing that was out of an 18 inch barrel. That's gonna give you a little seven foot pounds of recoil energy, nothing. <laughs> so go to a bolt gun with that same thing though, and you can push the pressures up on that one and that will give you um, a little more velocity, 2,750 to 2,850 feet per second. That's getting right up there. 
108 grain bullet in a 243 is probably only going to go at best 3,000 feet per second. So you are not very far off. And we're going to look at some ballistic numbers to show you how remarkably close that comes. So um, the upshot is that this little guy will do deer hunting performance out to 300 yards pretty easily. So let's look at the ballistic numbers on our drop charts now. Once again, we're using a six inch diameter target as our vital zone, and that'll establish our maximum point blank range. We're gonna use a seven pound rifle for the recoil comparisons for the felt recoil. Six millimeter ARC shooting this 108 grain bullet. It has a BC of 0.536, sectional density of 0.243, driving it, we're gonna go for the average here, 2,800 feet per second, bolt gun. That's going to give us muzzle energy of 1,880 foot-pounds. The recoil is going to be eight, big deal, <laughs> and your maximum point-blank range is going to be 280 yards. That means if you aim dead center on a six-inch circle, you're going to go high three inches at about 125 to 130 yards, and it's going to start to fall. And when you get out there at around 280 yards, it drops three inches. That means you've got a dead-on hold for your deer out that far. And for most people hunting whitetails in the east, especially in the Midwest, you don't very often shoot more than 200 yards. You've got yourself a great deer rifle if it delivers the kind of punch you want on your deer. So we're going to look at that next. What happens to that muzzle energy at 100 yards? 1,659. Plenty of energy. 200 yards, 1,460 foot-pounds. And at 300 yards, you still have almost 1,300 foot-pounds of energy. A standard for deer uh, is a thousand foot pounds of energy. Several states will list that as what they want for an effective deer cartridge. I don't think it even has to be that high. I mean, I've seen too many deer killed with a lot less energy than that. You get a good bullet, you put it in the right place, and it's not going to bounce off if you're less than a thousand. So you've easily got a 300 yard gun in this little stump with hardly any recoil. Amazing. Now, Let's compare that to the Creedmoor, the six millimeter Creedmoor. And that would have been this guy neck down to six millimeter, which of course is doing the same thing as your 243. So you could consider this compared against the 243 or even the six millimeter Remington if you still have one. Um, and we're gonna again use the same bullet now. It's gonna be a six point, uh, 108 grain bullet. Everything's the same on it, except we're getting more velocity. 3,050 feet per second pretty good speed. You might get a little bit more, a little bit less, but that's a good average. Look at the differences in the energy. 1976 at 100 yards compared to 1659, not a big difference. You go all the way out to 300 and you've got more than enough in that 243 six millimeter Creedmoor. But let's compare the drops and the wind deflection. That's what surprises me. 2.7 at 100 yards versus 2.5 on the drop between those two, no big deal. Go out to 200 and it's 1.9 inches of drop out of the little guy and 2.4 inches. Oh, that's not drop, that's still high. I'm sorry, I would get these things mixed up because at 200 yards, we're still a little bit high. Remember our peak was at three inches high at about 125 yards. So the uh, faster one is gonna be a little bit higher. That means it's going to drop less at 300 yards. So 300 yards, you've got 4.6 inches of drop out of the uh, ARC and only 2.6 out of the faster one, the bigger one, the 243, six millimeter it's Creedmoor. So there's where you have an advantage for a lot, a lot farther reach if you need it. What about wind deflection? Boy, pretty close. Even out at 300 yards, it's 5.8 inches for the ARC, only 5.1 for the six millimeter Creedmoor and or 243. Big deal, you know, three quarters of an inch different in your wind deflection. Nobody's going to be missing a deer or even a coyote with this kind of performance out of that little stumper. So a lot of folks will say, this thing actually performs better than a really popular 6.5 Creedmoor. <laughs> and I know you Creedmoor haters are going to love this news. <laughs> We're going to beat out the Creedmoor? Yeah, let's do that. So look at your numbers. Top one, six millimeter ARC, bottom one, 6.5 Creedmoor. And remember now, we're going for a 24 to a 26 caliber bullet. And we're going to jump right up to 200 yards where we have the same drop 
or non-drop, 1.9 inches high. Wind deflection, little bit of an advantage to the uh, 6.5, but not much. 2.5 inches versus 2.2 inches, no big deal. At 300 yards, 5.8 inches of a deflection in the wind for the ARC, only five for the Creedmoor. But your energies, yeah, you're going to have more energy out of that Creedmoor because you've got a heavier bullet. But again, you've got more than enough for deer at a thousand and you've got almost 1300 foot pounds of energy out of the ARC. My take on this, guys, is that there's not enough ballistic difference between the 6.5 or the 243 six millimeter Creedmoors and this little ARC to even fool with. So why not just get the little guy? Now, if you're thinking you might go out west to hunt mule deer or long range for pronghorns, or you just plain want to shoot beyond 300 yards, then you might want to look at more data and reconsider. But I keep coming back to what a lot of my, my viewers and readers comment on it. I don't shoot deer past 200 yards. So ARC is going to do the job for you. So I, I would just say, don't be like me. Well, you could be like me now that I've opened my mind, but don't be like I was when I wrote that initial blog about the race to the bottom, because despite what it looks like at first blush, this ARC is really a pretty cool little invention. That's it's a great little efficient cartridge. And so many of us are interested in efficiency these days. I mean, look at the small powder capacity on that. You're probably gonna load up 25 grains of powder to drive that bullet to achieve everything that we just talked about. So you're going to save a little bit of powder over the time. I mean, I always say, what's a few grains of powder when you're shooting at a deer, you know? But if you do a lot of target shooting, there's other benefits to this thing. I wrote some of them down here. Let me read some of them. Benefits of the six millimeter ARC cartridge. Reduced recoil. Reduced muzzle blast. Reduced flame and throat burning. This is a big one for people who like to shoot a lot. You're not gonna burn the throat out with that little guy. The powder center is nearer the primer. That's a big deal with these short fat cartridges. The idea is you want the flame from the primer to reach the center of the powder and burn out in all directions. That's easier done with a shorter case. This one's got an advantage there. And then you've got your fast twist. This thing is set up for seven, seven and a half inch twist barrel. So you're going to stabilize those big heavy bullets. And if you don't like big heavy bullets, if you can call a 108 grain bullet big and heavy, you can step down to all the other 243 bullets. Handload yourself a 55 grain if you want, a 75, an 80. They're all out there. They're all available and they will all shine in that little six millimeter. So whether you like to shoot an AR or a typical bolt rifle, I think if you're a typical deer hunter, coyote hunter, especially in the Midwest or the East, I would take a real hard look at that six ARC. And if you're starting any new shooters in center fire, man, that's a really great cartridge with which to do it. Because not only can they learn to shoot without a lot of recoil and muzzle blast, but when they're ready to hunt, they've got a cartridge that can do the job. That's my new take on the 6 ARC. And uh, hats off to Hornady for coming up with this one. You guys are really thinking it through and doing a great job. Hey, this is Ron Spomer. I invite you to subscribe to the channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing here. A special thanks to all of our patrons who support us and make all of this possible. We really appreciate that, guys. And you can also catch us on Ron Spomer Outdoors podcast channel where we read old articles. We answer questions from our readers. Those are really fun. And we have guests on from time to time. And that's uh, we really appreciate those folks are jumping in to learn a lot of new things with them on. So until next time, this is Ron Spomer signing off with his usual, hunt honest and shoot straight.